Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. A local ad adage states, it's the rat in-house that tells the one outside how to circumvent the traps in the house. Our country can only be good if we want it so, because it is Nigerians that are destroying Nigeria. We are the Nigerians of yesteryears that will rise to demand transparency and accountability from government anytime there's a price hike. Today, government increases fuel price and we all sit down and smile. Interest rates are tariff are increased, cost of living is getting so high, government refused to cut cost of governance, more than 10 presidential jets lying waste in Abuja, ministers and executive officials still living a statuous lifestyle and going for medicals abroad, national assembly members still collecting humongous allowances and buying cars that are not produced in Nigeria, judges are selling judgment, Nigerians, yet all of us, are debating APC and PDP. Everyone I have mentioned above and more, either for good, bad, or ugly, are all Nigerians and not foreigners. Why some are making the country proud at home and abroad, like the recent appointment in Canada, the Nigerian that was appointed at Attorney General of the State in Canada, some are doing everything possible to make sure Nigeria is perpetually known in the negative, including government officials encouraged by the silence of the ordinary man. Same way our leaders at home don't have value and regard for our citizens, is the same way majority of our embassy staffs abroad treat Nigerians in need of the embassy service. A country's foreign mission abroad should ordinarily be home to our citizens, but ours is not the case. Let's start with the Nigerian embassy in Germany. Most phone calls to their official numbers are hardly answered. Passports appointments are not less than six months. And mind you, this is deliberately made so to give room for some touts or their agent, agent of the workers stationed outside of the embassy to fleece applicants of 100 euro each to gain entrance to the embassy or get an early appointment date. Even if they are 10 to at least 30 people in a week, that's about 3,000 euro illegally entering someone's pocket. It's not as if the issue is different from the passport issue in immigration here in Nigeria, but we are talking about our image abroad. Anyway, you can call it the exploitation of Nigerian the Nigerian way or the Nigerian way of doing things, you'll be right. But we must change it. After pressure from the Nigerian community in Germany, a consulate was opened in Frankfurt in an attempt to ease the pains of citizens. But the attitude was only transferred from you know, the formal uh, office to this other one, as the attitude of those in Frankfurt became even worse. They were not able to issue passports for a long time. Even the visas they were initially issued had been taken over by foreign companies who charges an extra 115 euros for their service with an official fee of 108 euros, an additional fast track fee from those stouts of 100 euros, collected by the embassy stout for early appointment. As someone rightly queried, so what was the purpose of the Frankfurt consulate? No visa, no passport, and still on salaries, Nigeria will hate you. The embassy in Netherlands and Belgium are not different in the behavior and style, they are all the same. Even the one in London has an extra 50 pounds charge, tagged office maintenance cost, which is not stated anywhere in the visa application requirement online on their website, but is compulsorily collected by every applicant before being attended to. Only recently, some Nigerian visa and passport renewal applicant cried out about their ordeal in the hands of Nigerian embassy in Canada. I don't think much has changed either. The foreign mission in America is also not different from the above scenario. As a narration of the experience from families of had children in America 
of their deal in trying to get visa or passport for their Nigerian children before returning home has been most harrowing. It is, however, interesting to note that most of the requirement and process of obtaining American international passport for these children were done from the comfort of their parents' laptop and with a distant process and experience from these same countries. I would therefore advocate, like Senator Ina Abaribe once said, you cannot have democracy without Democrats. In the same vein, you can't have leaders if there are no followers. You cannot have official stealing without accomplice, and you cannot give bribe if there are no takers. When we collectively compromise the system, whether at home or abroad, we and our children are the ones that will bear the consequences, either now or years after. When we intentionally close our eyes to corruption, corrupt practices, nepotism, mismanagement, barefaced fraud and favoritism, because our tribesmen, religious person, party, or candidate is involved, we and our children are the ones that will suffer the consequences, either now or thereafter. And if only we understand the far-reaching and the multiplying effect of some of these our actions and inactions on our generation now or later, we make haste to do the right thing. If only we know the money stolen from our country daily by us, our leaders and foreigners alike, and that will be enough to develop our land like Europe and America and Dubai. And we won't even need to travel to all these countries to get the best of life. We will hurry to question our leaders every action and inaction. Mind you, our collective actions and inaction is what is destroying Nigeria. And the problem can only go away if we, if we the followers, want it to. And that's why I said Nigerians destroyed Nigeria. And only Nigerians can feast Nigeria. So I, as a Nigerian, has chosen to be different. So what have you chosen to be? <clears throat> Our leaders yes, have continued to <clears throat> do what they do because they're encouraged by the silence of the ordinary man. It is so true. I once read a book. I've been writing, reading it in bits. It's about followership by a Harvard professor, a woman. And um, contrary to wild-held views and beliefs, the blame doesn't always lie with the leaders. The followers also take blame because there can't be leaders without followers. This idea of um, it's going to be our turn too late, let it just be. The reason why a lot of things are the way they are is because we're also priming ourselves for when it will be our turn mm -hmm. to now eat this um, elaborate, this, this mythical national cake. And so things continue to be the way they have been. Imagine these atrocities in our, at our embassies abroad. Even to be a Nigerian abroad is, is, is laborious. It, it's, it's difficult. Yes. You know, it's a lot of work to be a Nigerian. It is a lot of work to be one. It's, it's, um, it's amazing to think that we will behave differently abroad um, when we go to the passport office in Ekoi and you see the way people, um, what people go through to get a passport. So we're not saying when we get to Germany, uh, at the embassy in Germany, that will be different. It's not different. My, my immediate sister and her family lives in Germany. They had to come to Nigeria yeah. to get a passport renewal because it was literally impossible. At the point in time, they said, please, can you even try for us? Maybe because there's this online thing that is there. I tried, Taya. It wasn't going. So what's the point? Uh, similar example. My daughter, I think, uh, was trying to renew a Nigerian passport. And the embassy in London asked her at some stage if she knew people in Abuja to make it, uh, to, to be able to send them some booklets. Mm -hmm. So that, they and, and I thought, well. somebody outside is going to help an organization yes, it's always from the outside <laughs> no and booklets. come back inside. That is Nigeria. No booklet is used. In the same way, in the same way, I was once, in the same way, I was once, um, I was once given the big booklet uh, for the, uh, and, and, and um, because they didn't have the small ones. Okay. And they made me pay for the big one. Of course. That's not right. right. And if you start, um, you want to zero in? You know, a couple of things come to mind when thinking about this conversation. First of all, that democracy, it doesn't just end when we vote at the polls. It comprises of a continuous system of accountability for, for our leaders. Second thing is that our leaders have entered into the system and created, you know, a system or a structure that is hell-bent on corruption. That if you alone, as a good person, 
head into that particular system, you will not be able to do much yeah. or any much yeah. at all. Yeah. Because yeah. the system is has now become dependent on corruption. You cannot do anything good without some measure of compromise. And, you know, that is literally how it is when it comes to citizenry. You know, now, for example, look at the four hike. A lot of people are just, you know, bearing it, taking it as it comes. Protests, how do I put this now? Accountability without all of us will not work. Yeah. And that's just the truth. It won't just, it can't just in small clusters, you know, maybe like 10 people in Jaws, you know, even like 100 in Lagos, 100 in Abuja, 100 in Kaduna. It's not, we need all of us together, True. coming True. together as one massive body to, you know, speaking with one voice to see that we are not going to permit this as a culture. You know, corruption has now become a culture for us as a people. That is why. You know, the same thing that is happening in the Nigerian passport office. I've gone through it myself. will be happening in the German, you know, the German passport office as well and the one in Netherlands. Because it has become a culture. Until we come together generally as the mass people and put our foot down and say, no, we will not have this corruption or culture within us. And then we will also not allow our leaders to take us for a ride as they take us for a ride. Because they can do something today. They will rant about it on Twitter. Two days later, you see BB Niger trending. I'm not telling you not to work with Niger. I'm just telling you focus on what is important. The same way people yeah, can gather you. together for liquor, you know, in their <laughs> millions and thousands. Gather together and say, no, we will not agree to this war hike that you people want to foster on us. Just after we're coming out of a pandemic, you know, they are saying that, oh, that Canada is in recession. You should be happy that you are not in recession. What is there to jubilate about? Your economy is not even getting stronger. You, you just give us crumbs. And you, we yeah, need to come the economy. as a whole. You know, it's just... That's the economy okay. is not getting stronger, and then we are here. I, I see, I can feel your passion, I, and, um, and, 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 that's, and that's very good. And so, like I said, I choose to be different. Nefisa has chosen to be different. Each and every one of us here has chosen to be different. So we are, appreciate you sharing yours with us. Um, James Adam is pleased by Chuka's advocacy, as he says. Thank you, boss, for taking life simple. You take life simple, maybe because you stay at school in one of the developed countries in the world. The average white people takes life easy. That's hardly know who is rich and poor. But in Nigeria, hmm. Whereas Ike Enere Madu, I sound like a query Madu anyway, is provoked by my last advocacy, INEC bias and election tribunal, and says that judgment for a fresh election is meant to give APC another chance to rig itself in. The question is, will APC participate in a fresh election, having been previously disqualified? Also, Dr. T has a message for Kene on Aisha's advocacy. Die and die. And he's saying, Kene, I, I love you, but I don't agree with you on this one. Looking for specific agendas to protect, protect for is another cowardly excuse. The problem has always been unity. No one dies for who we spit on their grave. Oh, yes. No one dies for who we spit on their grave. Thank you, James Adam, Ike Enere Madu, and Dr. T for your feedback. We may not agree, but it broadens the conversation, like we always say. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, just simply go to plustvafrica.com for slash. The advocates and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel Plus TV Africa. Treasure takes it up from here. After the break, I'm agreeing with liberals in saying if you desire to make a difference in the world, you must be different from the world. After the break. <laughs> <laughs>